Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a closer look at the WGS84. What is the WGS84? Well, it stands for the World Geodetic System. And in 1984, we had the last major revision. We had a lot of older ones before that, but by the time we did the WGS84, all the parameters were fairly accurately. And not until just a few years ago, back, well, actually last year in 2021, we're not quite in 2023 yet, um, just a year ago, they did some minor revisions again to try get the parameters to be much more accurate. Now, the older systems, we have what we call the European Datum 50, it was established in 1950. We had the North American Datum, we had the Tokyo Datum, but we wanted something that was worldwide for the entire world. So the first WGS, the World Geodetic System, was produced in 1960. Then in 1966, we had another major update. In 1972, we had another major update. And notice how the parameters began to refine into the exact value that they are today. So notice that in 66, we had the semi-major axis established to be 6, uh, well, 6 million 378,195 meters. Six years later, that was then reduced to 6 million 378,135 meters. And currently, it is 6 million, oh wait, I don't have it right here. Where do I have it over here? Yep, here we go. We have it at 6 million 378,137 meters. So you can see that we have now established about as accurate as we can get it, although if we can, we'll still continue to refine it in the future. Uh, but notice that these parameters have changed a little bit. Here we had F at 2, now that's a flattening at 298.26. Now we're currently at 298.257. So again, and of course a whole lot more decimal places after that. So again, we have some very accurate numbers today. So what are some of the major parameters that we're concerned with, with GPS? So we have the semi-major axis. We have the flattening curve, which now can be calculated very accurately. We have the Earth's gravitational term, which is the product of the gravitational constant and the mass of the Earth. And this is now established a lot of decimal places. We have the angular rotational velocity of the Earth at 72.92 times 10 to the minus 6 radians per second and that we you can calculate the semi-minor axis based on the semi-major axis and the flattening to be equal to this. And then we have the eccentricity squared, another parameter that's very important in, in GPS. And here again, we have the eccentricity established to a very, very accurate number, all based on what we call the World Geodetic System, which was set up for that specific purpose. So 1984, when uh, GPS satellites began to be launched into space and we're starting to use GPS, we needed all those parameters to be as accurately as possible to improve the capability of GPS. And right now, GPS has an enormous capability based upon these very accurate Earth parameters. And that is how it's done.